I was recently on an ultra luxury cruise line and I realized being able to afford to go on one does not mean you should. In fact, I saw it could be one of the worst cruising decisions ever, as I will explain and show you. By the way, if you are new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge. Before going on this ultra luxury line, a big surprise hit me. It would have cost me as much once I included the onboard cost to cruise in a suite in the Caribbean on lines like Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Holland America, Celebrity, whatever. It would have cost me the same as it would to cruise on an ultra luxury line like Region Seven Seas, Seabourn and Silver Sea. I know because I compared them all before I actually booked the Regent cruise. They all cost a staggering $1,200 to $1,500 per cabin per night. That's 1,000 to 1,350 pounds. And knowing that they all cost the same, I had a lot of questions like you probably have too. My biggest question was how is an ultra luxury line different from going on one of those, what I'll call in this regular cruise lines? Here's what I found out. The ship had the same facilities as any other ship, a pool and hot tubs, bars, lounges, main dining rooms, specialty dining rooms, spa, fitness center, theater, shops, and so on. It went to the same places, calling it mostly the same ports. For example, in Barbados, we were in port with Costa, Celebrity, Pinot Cruises, and Antigua with MSC and Celebrity. I discovered also that my fellow passengers wanted the same things as on any other line. Good and plenty food and drink, a daily program with trivia, guest speakers, deck games, cooking demonstrations, karaoke and the like, captain's welcome party, deck parties, live music. They wanted to meet people. They wanted to shop and spend their onboard credit. They also wanted to get a good deal by booking their next cruise on board. In fact, they were so alike that I even saw chair hogs around the pool and bad manners in the theater. There was also the usual mix of cruises as on other lines I've been on, lots of couples, a good number of solo travelers, friends traveling together, multi-generational families, and same-sex couples. The dress code had about the same level as compliance on all those regular lines as it were, and was no smarter than other premium lines like Celebrity, Holland America, and Princess. No difference at all. The average age was the same, maybe it was even a bit younger than lines like Holland America and Princess, because of course, this is not a youthful party line. And also the cost is going to keep some people out. It was probably a bit of a shock because I expected the passage to somehow be different to other lines. So that got me thinking, if it's not the passengers that are the big difference, what is it then? The first, and simplest, of course, was my bill at the end was zero, as all the extras were in the fare, unlike when in a suite on those kind of regular lines, as I'm calling them, where it can be rather hefty. I knew the exact cost of my cruise before I boarded. On Region 7 Sea Cruises, even the excursions were included, as were gratuities, special dining, Wi-Fi, and all of the drinks. The second difference was having a much smaller cabin for the price. For example, the cruise I did before this was on Holland America Coningsdam in a Neptune suite. That was a huge suite at 502 square feet with seating area, bedroom, massive bathroom, and a huge balcony. For the same price on Regent, it was over a third smaller and more like a veranda cabin or a mini suite. Not only was the cabin smaller, but the experience was smaller too. It's a small ship experience and I cannot underestimate the importance of this. Region 7 Sea Navigator carries just 482 passengers. A smaller ship means way less choice of venues and of course, much fewer facilities. If I go on a suite on say Norwegian Encore, I'd have a choice of 11 bars. I counted a maximum of four on Navigator. The theater shows were on a much smaller scale. The shows weren't big glitzy productions like on Norwegian with full Broadway shows, celebrities high energy acrobatic shows, or even Holland America's One Step Dance Company shows with kind of big audio visual effects. There was also way less evening entertainment too. The one band, played in the Galileo Lounge, and there was a pianist in the Explorer Bar. This is the multiple venues with live music, comics, game shows on Norwegian Carnival, Royal Caribbean, or even the four live music venue, Music Walk on a line like Conde America. It was also a dramatically smaller daily program with fewer things laid on. 
there was usually one trivia day, one deck game event a day, one talk per day, and on port days often virtually no activities when the excursions were out and about. Of course there were no big activity facilities on deck, there was a small crazy golf course, but on bigger ships I of course will have multiple pools, go-karts on Norwegian, flow riders on Royal Caribbean, water slides on gosh so many ships, carnival ships, MSC ships, Disney ships and so on. I realized if as a cruiser I wanted choice, like to be entertained and have a lot laid on for me, then an ultra luxury line is definitely challenging. There was one big aha moment that this gave me. Paying for an ultra luxury line style fare to travel in a suite on a regular line as I'm calling them means I have the luxury of a large cabin, access in many to an exclusive restaurant, lounge, pool and deck like the Haven on Norwegian or the Retreat on Celebrity, but I can then tap into the hustle, the bustle, the choice of activities, the big scale shows and the entertainment. On ultra luxury though I'm paying for a smaller, more intimate, less high energy, probably a little bit quieter environment. I will come back to this when I talk about when an ultra luxury line might be better than paying for a suite on those other lines, but first three aspects that are an upside in their favour. Definitely one of the biggest differences I experienced as an undisputed advantage is in the area of food. Food is great on many cruise lines, but certainly on Region 7C and other ultra luxury lines, while the daily program may be light, the menus absolutely definitely are not. I counted over 50 items on the main dining room breakfast menu, including caviar on some days. The evening menus were vast with a page of standards, a page of daily specials, and a separate standalone dessert menu, and high quality and sophisticated dishes. When they did an on-deck barbecue, it made even the great ones that I've done on ships like Azamara look frugal. There are no upcharges for lobster and caviar that are non-existent across those other regular lines either. The other really big plus is excursions. They do small group excursions and I find this a step change in experience, as even when in a suite like I did on that Holland America Conningstam before this trip, all the excursions were in big groups. On Regent the tours were split, so I never had more than 20 people on an excursion. Probably the most significant difference I experienced was service. Right across the ship, in every single department, everywhere I went, the crew got to know me and greeted me by name. Everything was quickly personalized, like knowing that I liked skim milk in my decaf coffee at breakfast, or my caffeine-free diet coke or non-alcoholic wine at functions, and even the carving station lady in the buffet remembering that I like chicken legs, not breast. While I knew of course there is more crew per passenger than on any other line, it, it also felt that the training behind it was also so evident, but also versus other regular lines, it meant the crew had so much more time to stop and talk and interact. So for example, Ella, my server in the main dining room, was really interested in cameras and photography and of course she saw that I had many and so she was able though to stop, talk, chat to me about that because she had fewer tables to serve, she had time to kind of build a relationship. The officers were also very engaged, visible, they interact with guests more than I've seen on those regular lines certainly over the last couple of years. It's hard to describe, but I almost felt the ship was geared around me, that I was the focus of every department. Of course, that was not at all true because speaking to other guests, though they agreed that they felt the same way as I did. That it was about them, not about me. It really struck home to me that when spending this amount of money, careful choice is needed to ensure the overall experience is the best that money can buy for you. I know for example that my partner Mark would prefer to spend it on a bigger cabin, a suite to hang out in, varied venues, a busy daily program with lots going on to entertain him, big scale theatre shows, so a suite on a regular line would be how he'd want to spend those big bucks. For me I like the smaller, I like the more intimate, the more exclusive environment where it's more about the food, the service and the interactions. Though there is one massive factor I think will swing the decision, certainly for me, the destination and the reason for the trip. I must admit that going to the Caribbean on Regent was a little dull at times in the evenings versus those other regular lines because nightlife let the trip down a bit. 
you know, compare it to what it would have been on an American suite, it would have been just so much more active, so much more stuff going on. On the other hand, as I look at Japan, which I have booked for later in the year, if I compare Region 7C versus the bigger ships like that Holland America or Princess who do that itinerary, Region has a more intensive off the beaten path ports itinerary as well as covering the must see. They have lots of included excursions. Now the excursions are long days. So actually nightlife is going to be much less important. So small and intimate is going to work better, which is why I'm going to spend that amount of money going on Region 7C not on a suite on one of the other lines. Now, if you found this interesting, watch this video where I dive into my experience of Regent with how it started really badly and why I was surprised at what they were doing and why. See you over there.